So welcome to the second video of this, how to build your own desktop PC series. In this video, I'm gonna go over the desktop PC case, what it entails and how to get it connected and set up. So the desktop PC case acts as the skeleton for your machine. It's the piece that houses all the other components, the power supply, motherboard, and everything else that gets connected to it. Desktop PC cases come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. But in this video, I will go over some of the fundamentals most common things that you will see in any case. One thing to mention is cases can vary quite a bit in price. You can get a case as cheap as $30 all the way to $250, even $300. The differences are sometimes minor, but there could be big differences for things that you don't necessarily care about. So that's why a really nice thing about building your own desktop PC, as I mentioned in my introduction video, is you get to pay for what you need, not pay for things that are in a desktop PC that you don't necessarily care for. So all Desktop PC cases will vary in simple things that you may or may not care about. Okay, so one thing that's common to all desktop PCs is that they all will have a power button. This is critical. There has to be a power button that actually gets connected to the motherboard to turn the system on. Another common button is the reset button. So there's always going to be a power button as well as a reset button. Desktop PC cases may or may not have LEDs that light up to show you the activity of your hard disk drive or your overall system. So in this case, there's two LEDs that will show your activity to the hard disk drive, as well as the, the general activity of the CPU. Now it is worth mentioning that the cases will have these buttons in multiple locations. It could be in the front, it could be in the side, it could be in the top. It all depends on the case. So the position and location of these buttons can vary, but the functionality is effectively the same. Something else that will vary from case to case is the number of USB ports that you have, as well as the USB port generation. So you can have USB 2.0 port, as well as USB 3.0 or 3.1 or 3.2 ports. That'll all factor into the price of the desktop PC that you will be buying. In my case, I went with a cheaper price case that has everything that I can possibly need. It's got two USB 3.2 ports, a USB 2.0 port. It's got the basics, obviously the power button and the reset, but it's also got some audio uh, headphone jacks in the front and a status. Desktop PC cases will also vary in price depending on the number of fans that come with it, as well as how noisy these fans are. The fan quality will also factor into the desktop PC case price. Now you may not necessarily care about the noise as much, or you could be okay with the fan noise that comes with it, but oftentimes you could easily change the fans in an existing case if you choose to do so. In my case, I went with a lower priced case. I don't expect these fans to be the best. I expect them to be maybe a little bit noisy, but if I choose to change them, I have the ability to do that. As you can see here, the fans are usually of a standard size. You can buy them in all kinds of shapes and thicknesses and size, but uh, it's easy to just unscrew these right here and replace the fans with whatever fan you choose to buy. I don't envision needing to change the fans. And I think the fans that came with this are actually going to be okay. Also, I have complete control as I will show you here in a minute. I can enable or disable these fans. I, cho I can choose to not connect them to power so they don't actually run. I may not need all the fans. So this case is really nice. It came with a tempered glass in the front that doesn't have any screws to open. It's got a hinge hinges on the side. You can simply Pull it, it's got a magnetic attachment here. You don't have to do much to open the case and access the inside. There's six fans that came with this case. There's a fan right here at the bottom, two fans on the top, and three fans on the front. So as I mentioned, the cases will come in different sizes, but most importantly, what you really care about is the motherboard size that the case supports. So what I have always opted to go with is I always buy ATX motherboard. ATX is the form factor of the motherboard. And what that means is a form factor is basically a term for the motherboard size and the location of the screws on the motherboard. As you can see here, there are these screw holes that are attached to the case in specific spots. And this is where the motherboard will get mounted. There's specific spots where the screws exist on the motherboard itself such that it would lay right here and get attached to the case through these screw holes. All your connectors will go through the back right there. So it's actually fairly easy and straightforward to install the motherboard. I'll have all the steps and details in a following video in this video series. So stay tuned for that. And I'll leave a link below for that video. For reference, 
You can get mini ATX and there's other various sizes, which are form factors for the motherboard. But the most commonly used motherboard form factor and as well as cases is ATX. So I highly recommend you go with ATX form factor. The reason why I recommend that is that's when you will see the most options and variety in cases and motherboards, etc. when you're shopping for parts for your desktop PC. You could get a full tower, which is a higher desktop PC case. You can get medium towers such as this one. This is considered a medium tower case. You can also get a mini tower case. All of them will have the same size and location for the motherboard. That's going to always be I believe it's nine inches by 12. That's the motherboard size, and they'll have the same screw holes ready for motherboard to be installed. What will vary is the spacing around the motherboard, above the motherboard and to the sides, and also the number of expansion slots that the case will support. So you can spend more money and buy a full-size desktop PC case, but you really don't need to have that because you're only using, for example, one or two of those expansion slots right here. If you're gonna be running with a GPU, even two GPUs, you're likely not gonna need anything higher than a medium-sized desktop PC. So this is an example of a situation where you could buy a fully assembled desktop PC that has a full tower, but you don't really need that capability. You don't need that extra spacing in your case that you're never gonna necessarily use. Full tower cases tend to be a little bit more expensive than medium tower for obvious reasons, but most people don't actually need the full tower capability. So desktop PC case is the most basic component when you're building your own desktop PC, a bunch of metal, glass, screws, and fans, along with some very important connectors. So let's get into the connectors of a desktop PC case. Now these connectors are going to be somewhat standard. Some of them are gonna be somewhat standard. Some of them are going to vary depending on the USB ports that are available on the front. So as I mentioned before, in my case, I have USB 3.2 ports as well as USB 2.0 ports. You could have a case that only has 3.2 or only 2.0. That variance itself will dictate the connectors between the case that are available to be connected to the motherboard. So every desktop PC case is gonna have some standard connectors that are gonna be common across all cases, as well as some specific connectors that are going to depend on the physical ports that are available in this case. In my example, I have two sets of USB connectors. I have a USB 3.2 ports on the case, and therefore I have a USB 3.0 connector right there. This connector will attach to the motherboard to enable the USB ports on the case to be usable. So that's one case where the physical connections in the case can be different from case to case. Here is my USB 2.0 connector right here. All of these connectors are going to connect to the motherboard. In this case that I have, I also have audio jacks, audio connectors that enable me to connect like a headphones or even my microphone. Here's the connector for that. You may or may not have a connector like this if you don't have audio jacks on the front of the case or in the case itself. So let's go over some of the standard connectors that you will see in every desktop case. All of these connections are usually one or two pins like this. See, this is a two pin connector. So let's go over some of the standard connectors. This is a software reset. This is the button that you push to reset the desktop PC and make it restart. So that is a two pin that connects to the motherboard in a specific location on the motherboard that's targeted for that purpose. Here's your main power button, the power button that you push to turn on your desktop PC. That has an additional separate two pins. Then you have your power LED that's the LED that stays on to tell you that there is power applied in your motherboard when your desktop PC is on. Usually that's a two pin, a plus and a minus that connects in a specific location on the motherboard. And last but not least, this is the hard disk drive HDD LED that shows you activity when your motherboard or your system is accessing the hard disk drive that you have installed. One thing I like about this case is that it came with these mesh pieces that have magnetic strips on the edges that simply go on the outside of the case. This is really nice and because I can just pull these off and clean them without having to do anything with the case itself. So it's a nice little feature. Every desktop PC case will come with small features like this that can really make a big difference. But I can assure you, you oftentimes don't have to spend a lot of money to get the exact case with the exact features that fits your needs. You could easily spend more money on something that you will find never usable to you 
So that's a huge advantage to building your desktop PC yourself because you can pick and choose and you can optimize your money for buying components that are applicable and most useful to the way you use your desktop PC. So this pretty much covers all key points of what is in a desktop PC case. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.